Stella is like a warrior princess. She is the bravest of all of the cats. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo, the Lucky Ferals. Good morning, Stella. We're not eating yet. We'll eat in about 20 minutes. Okay? About 20 minutes? Okay, soon. Hello, Boo. Hello, Boo. How are you today? Hmm? The thermometer in Hydroxy's shelter says it's 60.9 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is the temperature chart for the day. So as you can see, uh, the temperature peaked yesterday afternoon and it's been falling since then. And right now it's at a low point. So we'll see how today goes. Hello, Boo. I was showing you the temperature in Hydroxy Shelter and Boo jumped on the bed. He wants some attention. Look right now. I can rub his paws and he's not getting agitated. He's actually purring. Hello, Boo. Boo's waiting for breakfast. Now, Boo ate his dinner super late last night. I gave him his dinner, gosh, around 11 p.m., maybe even later. And he finished it. I just checked his dish and it's all gone. So I think what happens with Boo is I give him his meals and uh, his eating schedule is different than his feeding schedule. So I feed him at certain times. And then he doesn't actually eat at those times. He eats at different times. And Boo was on free roam last night. And he appeared to be up most of the night. At least uh, the few times I woke up, he was up and looking out the window. It rained last night, so it was kind of noisy. But when it rains out, Boo has plenty to look at, right? Okay, you don't want me to pat you? Okay. He's purring. He's purring. So, in my kitchen, I have, like, this baker's rack. And I used to have all of my cookbooks on it um, until yesterday. And I decided to move all of the cat feeding stuff here. So now this is like the cat feeding station. And I have like all the canned foods for Hydrox or when I forget to defrost raw food, I have booze plates. I have these other bowls. I don't really use these bowls so much so they could go uh, downstairs in the closet, but for now they're here. Right now this is just to get organized. These are the bowls that I defrost the raw food for the downstairs cats in when I defrost them in the bowls. Um, these are the freeze dried raw nuggets. Uh, that I give to the cats sometimes. Um, so right now, this is the feeding station, and I kind of like having it here separate from the rest of the kitchen counters. Um, I don't know, just for sanitary reasons for myself. Um, I like it that way. I don't like cats sharing uh, the same food prep spaces uh, that humans share. Like, these cats never go on the kitchen table and they very rarely go up on the counters and when I do catch them on the counters they know to jump off immediately because there are certain places they are not allowed to go so um, yeah so I'm really happy with the setup right now and we'll see how it goes the only other thing I want here is a dry food dispenser and I bought one at home goods and that's the real reason why I made this the cat feeding station is because I had a dry food dispenser um, the kind almost like the kind that you see in petting zoos where you know you turn the knob and a portion of dry food comes out I want it to help with portion control for the cats the problem is it's too tall and it doesn't fit in this area because like here's the top there's about a 16 inch clearance and the dispenser was 17 inches so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna return it to the home goods that I bought it from and they did have another model I'm gonna see if that model is lower and if that model will fit because I would really like a dry food dispenser so this is where I defrosted the cat's raw food and right now what I am going to do is put booze on his plate 
and serve him his breakfast. Now I really feel like I have a restaurant for cats here because this little setup is making me feel like it's a restaurant prep station. If you've ever worked in a restaurant or a food establishment, um, yeah, that's totally what I feel like right now. I have to laugh. Good morning, Stella. How are you? Did you have a nice night, Stella? Stella, did you have a good night? Okay, there's definitely a cat party going on here. So, there's a scratch and roll. There's that tree thing. I really don't even know what to call that thing. If anyone knows what to call that thing, let me know. There's the arch. There's the cat at Digger. There's the box. Everything's moved all around. There's a strawberry. There's the rug all bunched up. There's their platter tossed to the side. And there's one of those blue tinsel fish near the water. I don't know what you guys were doing, but it sure looks like you had a good time. Right, Splash? Splash, you hungry? Splash, wanna eat? I'm trying to make a smoothie this morning and Stella has decided she wants to lay down exactly where I need to stand to make the smoothie because the blender is on the counter right above her. Stella, would you like some of my smoothie? It has cat grass in it. It's a wheatgrass smoothie, Stella. Would you like some? Okay, I know. I need to plant more wheatgrass. I know. That's what you're telling me. And you're right. I can put some wheatgrass powder on your food. Is that what you want me to do? Okay, let's go. This is the wheatgrass that I use for my smoothies. So let's go sprinkle some on Stella's food. I just put some of the green powder on her food. Maybe she'll eat it. 11.44 a.m. Splash is laying in the cat tower in the window. Simba is laying curled up around the cat at circuit. He's sleeping here. He's sleeping on the undercover mouse curled up around the cat at circuit. Boo is in his room, sleeping on his day bed. First he's grooming himself, and then he's gonna take his nap. This is kind of like their schedule. So they will be up in the morning, and you know they'll be roaming the house and playing. Then they get their meal, and then a short while after their meal, they usually like to look out the windows, and then after they look out the windows, they take their naps. And they pretty much sleep all afternoon. And then they get up around dinner time, like I would say, like six, seven, or eight. That's when they get up, and then they'll be up um, for hours. And then they might take like another nap um, in the evening, or sometimes they sleep in the middle of the night. But then they get up. So they have like a split sleeping schedule, whereas humans tend to, you know, sleep for six to eight hours straight at night. Um, the cats tend to split that up into two sleeping shifts. In the afternoon, they usually sleep, I would say, anywhere from like three to five hours. And then in the middle of the night, they'll get another three to five hours of sleep. And a lot of people say that cats sleep, you know, like 20 hours a day. I don't really find that to be the case with these cats. Of course, on the live streams, they sleep a lot because that's their sleeping time. Um, but the rest of the time, usually when I'm home, they're not really sleeping that much unless I'm home for a full day. Like if I'm off and I have the whole day at home, then that's usually when I find them sleeping the most. And there's Stella. She's sleeping in her round cat bed. And look, look, it's her pink heart. She's sleeping in the round cat bed and there's her pink heart right behind her. They love these hearts. And look at this. She ate the food with the wheatgrass powder on it. Notice that she ate only the food with the wheatgrass powder on it. All the other foods like around the edge that did not have the powder on it, she did not eat it. It's about noon. The thermometer on the side of the garage says it's about 40 degrees. The thermometer in Hydrox's sunroom says it's about 
48 degrees. The thermometer inside the shelter says it's 61 degrees and I just checked that before I came outside and it's definitely not 61 degrees out. It is cold and it is wet. I just gave Hydrox half a can of food and some fresh water. 12.08 p.m. Simba is now sleeping on the bed. Simba's been laying on the bed and telling me how cute he looks. And he said, I'm so cute right now. Why don't you take out your camera? Simba has decided he's taking over the bed for the afternoon. Simba, you have a fluffy belly. Simba, you have a fluffy belly. Simba's purring. Do you hear Simba purring? Simba's purring. Oh, he just headbutted the camera. Look how fluffy he is. Simba, you're so fluffy. Okay, you're done? You're done? Simba, are you done? Simba has paws that look like Boo's paws. Did you notice? It looks like Boo's paws. All of Simba's paws look like Boo's paws. Simba has his daddy Boo's paws. So you know pets? Okay, you want to hold my hand while you sleep? It's like 9.20 and uh, I'm just getting home and I'm going to feed the downstairs cat. Boo's on a live stream right now. And I just want to point out the fact that Splash has been with Stella and Simba, and look, he's not running away, he's not backing off, he's letting me pet him. He's just like right up front and center with the rest of the cats. This is great for Splash, right Splash? Splashy, you're such a good boy. See, he's right here, look. Look at this, Splash is right here, no running. No running away for a splash. You must really be hungry. I fed them a late breakfast today, like they've been on a later schedule. But what I did not do was give them any crunchies. I don't even know if I gave them any crunchies today at all. All three cats are eating their food. I'm vacuuming the house today. Look at this. Look at all of that cat hair and stuff that it has sucked up. Like, this amazes me, but at the same time it grosses me out. And I still have two 
or three more rooms to go. This is pretty much just off of the cat's play rugs. Oh my god, it is so gross. But at the same time, I'm so happy that this vacuum is picking it up. Okay guys, check this out. So Stella kind of likes the new vacuum. Look, so I just came, I'm coming downstairs and I have the vacuum right now. It's a couple feet above Stella. Normally in the past, like all the cats would run from the vacuums. And look, she's not running. She's just sitting here. And watch, watch what happens if I turn the vacuum on, watch. She's not running. She's sitting there trying to figure it out. Stella! <laughs> Stella is like a warrior princess. She is the bravest of all of the cats. All the boys are scared to death of a vacuum and Stella says, yeah, so what? There's Stella. There's the vacuum. Stella's not running away. Okay, now she did. Maybe it's a little too close for comfort. No, nope, but she's back. Look. Tails in the air. Stella, you like the vacuum? So it ends up that this is one of Simba's favorite positions to sit on the stairs with his like one front leg down like that. I don't know why, but Simba loves sitting on the stairs like this. To me, it kind of looks uncomfortable. This is the heated pet bed that is currently outside in Hydrox's cat shelter. And this is what he has been using all winter. And I have it plugged into an extension cord that is then plugged into the outlet on the side of my house. And it is one of those GFCI um, outlets. I believe it's the ground fault circuit interrupters. So if there is an issue with the power, um, it will shut itself off. And uh, it's been doing a really good job keeping the cat shelter warm. Right now the temperature outside is 37 degrees. And the temperature in the cat shelter with this heated pet bed is 56.8 degrees. So it's about 57 degrees. So it's keeping the cat shelter about 20 degrees warmer. Now the thermometer in the cat shelter is actually I would say maybe a foot above where this heated pet bed is so that's assuming the cat is in the cat shelter right now because it does say that it is thermostatically controlled to warm directly under the pet so when the pet is laying on this heated pet bed um, then this warms up underneath the pet and the temperature that I'm showing here is from using this heated pet bed in an insulated outdoor cat shelter. And the cat shelter is made out of wood and it is also tucked under part of a building. So the temperature on the thermometer is the ambient air temperature in a cat shelter that is using this k and Electrosoft heated pet bed. And I think that's pretty awesome um, for it to be 37 degrees out, but for the shelter to be 57 degrees, um, that's, a, that's a big difference. So that would mean that when the temperature falls below freezing, uh, chances are really good that uh, the shelter is staying toasty warm. And not just the shelter, but the cat that's in the shelter. The cat that's in the shelter is going to be warmer than what I'm showing on the thermometer because the cat that's in the shelter is going to be laying on the heated pet bed. Thank you for watching this Lucky Ferals video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you'd like me to post more videos and please make sure to check out these other videos that were selected especially for you.